Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to Granny B's house. Are you having a good day? No, I hope so. Granny B's having a pretty good day, but I keep yawning. Oh, okay, I'm done now. Are you being kind to other people? Are you treating others the way you want to be treated? Oh, let's do. That just makes the world a better place. I'm, I'm yawning because I got up very early this morning and I need a nap. Do you take naps? Oh, Granny B likes to take naps. But first, I have to read Franklin Forgives. Let's see what he has to forgive. But I have to go back to the first page there. Sometimes Franklin made mistakes. Once he forgot to water Mr. Mole's garden, and once he broke a promise he had made to bear. Franklin had learned that saying sorry wasn't always easy, but one day Franklin found out it was even harder to forgive. One sunny afternoon, Franklin's mother had an idea. It's so hot inside, she said. Let's take our supper down to the pond. Franklin and Harriet cheered. Franklin ran to get his snorkel and flippers. In his room, he saw Goldie swimming around and around her goldfish bowl. Want to have an adventure, Goldie, he asked. Want to see what the big pond looks like? Franklin clutched the goldfish bowl in his arms and walked very carefully all the way to the pond. He found a perfect spot for Goldie. It was in the shade and right at the water's edge. Franklin packed a little sand up around the bowl's bottom and sprinkled some fish food over the top. There you go, Goldie, said Franklin. You can have a picnic supper too. Franklin's mother said there was lots of time to play before supper. Can't catch me, called Harriet, and off she ran along the shore. Franklin chased after her. Harriet ran and ran, slipping and splashing in the water. Suddenly, Harriet saw Goldie's bowl just in front of her. With a mighty leap, she tried to jump over it, but Harriet was too little and her legs were too short. The bowl tipped over and Goldie swam out. No, shouted Franklin. Franklin waded into the pond, scooping up hands full of water. Goldie, he shouted, Goldie. Franklin's parents came running. Franklin told them what had happened. I didn't mean to, Harriet cried. I'm sorry. Her mother held her tight. We know, Harriet, she said. Franklin ignored them. He kept searching for Goldie. Everyone hunted for Goldie until it was almost dark. We have to go home now, said Franklin's father. No, Franklin declared. I'm not leaving Goldie. You can come back in the morning, replied his mother. I'll come too, Franklin, said Harriet. I'll help you look forever. Franklin turned his back. That night, Harriet cried herself to sleep. A little while later, Franklin's parents tiptoed into his room. We know you're sad and angry, said his father, but it was an accident. Can you forgive Harriet? Franklin shook his head. If I forgive Harriet, then that means I'm forgetting Goldie, he argued. You'll never forget Goldie, his mother said. And Harriet feels as sad as you do. Franklin didn't answer. When morning came, the first thing Franklin saw was Goldie's empty bowl. He picked it up and hurried to the kitchen. Harriet was already there. I made pancakes, she said. You like pancakes. I'm not hungry, said Franklin. I'm sorry, Franklin, whispered Harriet. I really, really am. Sorry won't help me find Goldie, Franklin replied. He ran back to the pond. By now, Franklin's friends had heard the news. 
bear and beaver showed up at the pond and helped Franklin search. Poor Harriet, said Beaver. I bet she feels awful. Franklin frowned. Did she say sorry, Franklin? asked Bear. Yes, muttered Franklin, but what good does that do? He scowled and moved a little way off from his friends. In the afternoon, Franklin's mother found him alone in his room, staring at the empty goldfish bowl. She hugged him and kissed him and let him cry in her arms. I couldn't find Goldie, he sobbed. His mother hugged him tighter. Harriet feels terrible too, she finally said, but Franklin didn't want to listen. After supper, Franklin's father asked him to help with the dishes. You didn't eat much, he said. Not hungry, Franklin mumbled. His father put his arm around him. You can't stay mad at Harriet forever. Franklin sighed. I don't like being mad at Harriet, he said. Franklin went to his room. He noticed right away that the goldfish bowl was missing. He marched out to the kitchen. Where's Goldie's bowl, he demanded. Have you seen Harriet, his mother asked at the same time. Harriet, Harriet, called Franklin's father. Everyone began looking for Harriet. Franklin found Harriet on the back step. Goldie's bowl was beside her. I want to get Goldie back for you, she explained. Franklin took her hand. I know, Harriet, he said, but you can't go to the pond by yourself. We'll go together to look first thing in the morning. Poor Goldie, whispered Harriet. She's all alone in that great big pond, Franklin thought for a, mo a moment. Maybe she's having a big adventure. Franklin and Harriet decided to draw pictures of Goldie. After a while, Beaver waved to them through the window. She held up a jar. Look who was swimming by my house, she called. Goldie, Franklin exclaimed. After celebrating with cookies and milk and fish treats, it was time for bed. Franklin carried Goldie into his bedroom, and then he went and got Harriet. You can sleep in here with us tonight, he told her. Maybe Goldie will tell us all about her big adventure. Harriet smiled at her brother, and Franklin smiled back. Oh, boy, that was pretty scary for Goldie to be gone and for Franklin to be mad at Harriet. And I'm always glad when there's a happy ending. And I hope you have happy endings to your adventures. And I hope you'll remember that Granny Bee loves you. And I want you to come back and see me again real soon so I can read you another story. Okay? Bye-bye.